Hello my dear friends, you're on the Military Summary channel and this short video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night of the local time. And first we're going to start with the Kupin's direction. During the previous night the Russians were bombing Kupin's heavily as a result of artillery strikes around 75% of the buildings in this area was were without electricity. But this, uh, this way the Russians tried to slow down the Ukrainians and not so allow the Ukrainians to redeploy their reserves to Kislovka Katler of a uh, front line for stabilization of the situation. When talking about Kislovka Katlerovka about this area, the Russians from the northern direction continued their offensive operation in the direction of Ivanovka, which is still under Ukrainian control. For example, on this video we see how the Russians bombed another position of Ukrainian forces, but the village is still under Ukrainian control. When talking about Katlerovka Tabayevka about this territory, we still haven't received even a geolocated, even a single geolocated confirmation of Russian control over both the cities. Of course, most of the mappers have already updated their maps showing at least Abayev under Russian control, but when talking about pro-Ukrainian sources, they still haven't updated their maps. For example, Deep State still shows Abayev under Ukrainian control. Uh, during the previous night, the Ukrainians uh, tried to, according to the Russian sources, the Ukrainians tried to counter-attack the Russians in Abayev from many directions, trying to force them to step back and to uh, retreat, withdraw from these positions, but uh, according to the Russians, uh, they managed to uh, repel every single attack and to dig in deeper. Uh, furthermore, uh, when talking about Katlerovka, uh, the Russians, uh, as I understand, still haven't managed to establish control over the village, but according to Russian more or less reliable resources, they managed to get as close as possible to the village and, let's say, to answer the first the buildings on the outskirts of the village. So very likely that during the previous night the Russians managed to answer and that there are really clashes in this area, and I believe that today we're going to receive more updates from this territory. Now we are moving to Liman direction. We have interesting updates and geolocations. So first, let's talk about the Ukrainian FPV drone. This video, we can see how the Ukrainian FPV drone attacked the concentration of Russian tanks. Uh, we are using this video just to clarify the combat position, clarify the Russian control area. So there is no doubts. Uh, there are no doubts that this territory is under Russian control. Also, we have the video from the Russian side. The Russians were attacking the Ukrainian. Leopard 10 tank, Leopard 2 tank. Uh, as a result of that attack, Leopard probably was damaged. Very unlikely the tank was destroyed. But the most important uh, value of this video is the clarification of the combat line. So the Russian FPV drone attacked the Ukrainian tank here, which means that probably these three line is under complete Ukrainian control. So as I understand, uh, the map uh, doesn't correspond to the with the reality. Very likely that these three lines are under Ukrainian Ukraine control. We'll see the situation, we'll follow the situation. If it's if it's necessary, we will adjust the map. Furthermore, the Russians continue bombing and attacking the Ukraine positions uh, on the way to Yampolovka in Terny. On this video, for example, we can see the series of artillery strikes and FPV drone strikes against the Ukrainian forces uh, in these forests. Uh, let's say between uh, Dibrova, Krimina and Yampolovka. This is something like artillery preparation, FPV drone preparation. Very likely that today and the next few days the Russians will make more attempts to attack on this direction with the purpose to enter the first villages along Zheribets River. We are talking about Yampolovka and uh, about Tirny. So uh, the, uh, there were a lot of, uh, as you can saw, uh, uh, artillery strikes. Few of them were geolocated. The first one took place here. The second one took place here. So as you can see, the concentration of Russian fire. So very likely uh, today the Russians will try to enter this forest, or maybe they have already done this, and the Russians will try to enter this forest with the purpose to move uh, along these areas in the direction of Yampolovka. At least the artillery strikes tell us about this. Now we are moving to Bakhmut Artyomov's direction. We don't have lots of updates. Uh, the only thing we got uh, from this uh, video we can see uh, the FPV drone strike from the Ukrainian side uh, against the Russian forces in this area. If you remember, during the previous days uh, we uh, haven't received any geolocations whether the Russians managed to establish control over this stronghold. And now we have the first geolocation which confirms the Russian control over this territory. In this video we can see FPV drone strike 
strikes against the Russian infantry. Now we are moving to Ivanovskaya area. Uh, we have, as you can see, there are no icons, just one, this small picture. Uh, today we got a very interesting analysis uh, from this front line, uh, the satellite analysis, and on this video we can see the concentration of Russian artillery fire. Uh, it's like fresh video, fresh photo, and according to information we have, uh, the main Russian focus, main Russian artillery focus, uh, lays in two areas. This is uh, the first one. The Russians are bombing this uh, territory heavily, and we're bombing this territory. The second Russian focus uh, of artillery focus lays somewhere here. And the third Russian focus uh, take place uh, took place somewhere here. So based on this video, we can see that the Russians are planning and trying to improve their positions and to attack the Ukrainians along this line. This is like the primary priority, the first priority of the Russians to continue offensive operation further in direction of Ivanovskaya. And as I understand, the Russians are trying to attack the Ukrainians uh, below on the bottom, on the south, from Popovo Forest, probably to cut supply and also the Russians probably have some plans to attack Popovo forest in the very ne near future. So this is the main Russian ghost, main Russian attacks on this direction. Now we are moving to Avdeevka area. We have few interesting geolocations and updates. Let's start from the northern direction. On this video, for example, we can see how the Ukrainian tank, as a result of attack, uh, one fire, one shot, managed to destroy the Russian personnel armored carrier. This is a very important video that shows us the Russian progress on this direction. As you can see, the Russians managed to get very, very far from the main positions. And uh, that after the Ukrainians destroyed the Russian personnel carrier, the tank uh, left this territory but um, just stay, pay attention how far the Russians managed to get which confirms that the Russians do have some plans to attack in this direction uh, from the let's say southeast and from the south as well. Furthermore, we got another picture, a satellite picture with artillery strikes in this area. And from this uh, photo, we can say that the Russians have two uh, artillery focus areas. The first one is this one. So uh, this is the main, let's say, concentrated, uh, the most concentrated area of Russian artillery strike. And this is the second area. When talking about Berdichi, everything is clear. The Russians try to pin down the Ukrainian forces to destroy their positions and not to allow the Ukrainians to counter attack the Russian forces or to attack the Russian forces in Stipova. So everything is clear. But when talking about this concentration of fire, there are a lot of questions and very likely, and due to this geolocation of position of Russian tank, very likely that uh, the, those days uh, the Russians were trying to uh, establish control over this territory and probably to move further to the north in direction of Novokalinova. And maybe the Russians are going to do this because this is a very interesting position if the Russians can control this can establish control over this stronghold of course it will improve their position significantly on the northern direction and will reduce any Ukrainian attempts or possibilities to counter attack in direction of Krasnogorovka. Uh, now we are moving to the southern part we got today another update that the Russians managed to establish control over the former air defense base and but yet we haven't received even a single geolocated confirmation of that so when talking about priorities Artillery priorities, we see that these streets, Saborne and Spartino Chernyshevskova street, are under very heavy Russian fire. You know that now it's very difficult to understand uh, which focus is this. Maybe this is Ukrainian attack, Ukrainian fire, or maybe the Russians. Anyway, we see that these three streets are under very heavy fire, which confirms the continuous clashes for this territory. Now we are moving to the south in direction of uh, Pervomaiska. More and more sources report about um, additional Russian progress in the village. Uh, once again, yet we haven't received even a single geolocated confirmation of Russian control. But according to reliable resources, this territory is under the Russians. So as soon as we get uh, geolocation, we will adjust the map as well. When talking about Marinka area, we have also analysis of uh, artillery strikes. Uh, and when talking about Marinka direction, 
there are few artillery uh, concentrated areas. The first one uh, is on the northeast of Georgievka. Uh, all this territory is under complete and very heavy Russian fire. And we understand why the Russians are trying to move along this uh, bank of water reservoirs. This is the main Russian, let's say, uh, road uh, to attack Georgievka from the north. And uh, the Russians will continue bombing this territory. And the second concentration area of concentration of Russian fire take place took place here. And uh, uh, this is very interesting, by the way, area. The Russians were bombing this territory heavily, which means that very likely uh, the next Russian goal is to improve their positions uh, around Marinka and to capture this concentration of strongholds of Ukraine army. As you can see, there are at least three or four strongholds. First one, probably this is the second one. This is the third one. So if the Russians are able to capture this territory, then they will be able to secure their positions in Marinka. They will be able to get the operational space and this will allow the Russians to continue their offensive operation and half encircle Pabedov not just from the east but also from the north and northeast. So this is like the uh, say the best way how to improve Russian positions to capture Pabeda. Uh, we haven't received anything from South Donetsk direction and we're moving to the Zaporozhye area. The Russians continue their offensive operation in Robotina. Most of the mappers updated their maps in front of Robotina. We had a geolocated video of that. Today the Ukrainian sources published another video of Russian ground operation. Russian stormtroopers were moving along the tree line in direction of Robotina itself. This video also confirms that the Russians have launched the ground operation and very soon, very soon I suppose, we're gonna start receiving the first first video from inside of Robotina of clashes for the village. So we probably gonna see soon the Ukrainian retreat from this territory. We haven't received anything from Kherson direction. And that's it for the short video. Military summary channel reminds to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel, put your likes, share my Patreon and have a good day. Bye bye.